In the early history of the Japanese art of the sword, the bogu, or armor, used in kendo still hadn't been developed. The kenjutsu fights in those times were with real swords, or with bokuto, and for that one risked one's life in every combat. They were life or death confrontations. At the beginning, kendo training consisted of the practice of the katas. So each kenjutsu school, or rua, had its own katas, different from the other rua. Each rua had a great admiration for the master who created and founded their particular katas. The fundamental techniques were strictly secret, and outsiders were not allowed to observe them. At the same time, in each rua, these secret techniques were not taught until the students reached a high level of skill. Gradually, shinai and bogu were developed so that the kenshi could use them to carry out more realistic attacks during training. But even so, the domination of the katas was considered the first step of training. The practitioners had to develop their techniques first by training in the katas, and only then could they begin to practice shinai geko, training with shinai. Until the end of the Edo era, the reign of Shogun Tokugawa, many brilliant and exceptional experts in kendo reached a very high level by training in the katas. The first image of kendo is one of two practitioners with armor involved in a furious fight with the bamboo shiai, but that is only a part of this art. Another aspect, that which makes kendo a do, or path, is incorporated in contemporary no kata kendo. There are 10 kendo katas that are done with two people, shidachi and uchidachi, without armor who work together and in harmony with a wooden boken, or with the katana, if the level is very high. These 10 katas are like a library of the history of Japanese sword techniques. Seven of them are done katana against katana, and the other three with katana against wakisashi, or short sword. In each kata, Uchidachi acts as the aggressor and attacks with the katana, to which the Shidachi responds with his sword. These katas were selected from among thousands of katas developed by various sword schools throughout many centuries. One particularity of the ten katas is that they show various kamai, or on-guard positions, including those which are not normally used in kendo due to the restrictions of practicing with armor. One example is waki no kami, where the length of the sword is hidden behind the practitioner. It is rarely used in kendo since the regulations concerning the length of the shinai make it so that everyone's weapons are approximately the same. In a similar way, the three katas involving confrontation of the wakishashi against the katana are of historical interest and they give a more complete understanding of the way of the sword. We begin with the basic attacks in kendo. To the head, men. To the right forearm, kote. To the sides, do. And thrust to the throat, or Suki. Now we see the realization of Sao Men, 
which is to say, the consecutive attacks to men left and right. The movements must be broad, the left hand always in the center, and the angle of attack must be 45 degrees. Later, an example of Sao Men badly done, first with little amplitude of movements, and then displacing the left hand to the sides, causing a variation in the correct angle of execution. Next, the basic attacks in a real way, with Fumakomi and always maintaining the Ki Ken Tai Ichi. Ki refers to the spirit, Ken to the handling of the sword, and Tai to the posture and movement of the body. When one manages to harmonize these three elements and unify them with precision, the conditions are created to achieve a correct and valid attack. Some students of Saito Sensei doing the previous attacks already equipped.
Men Kirikashi is a method to practice the basic movements. Its practice is very important as much for beginners as for veterans. Training sessions usually begin and end with a Kirikashi. We'll now see some interesting moves previous to the attack or parts of techniques like hattie or displacement with the strike of the shinai of the opponent to the right or to the left. Ushi otosu or diagonal strike of the shinai of the opponent upward or else toward the right or toward the left. Suri Ageru, or diversion of the shinai of the opponent, raising our shinai upward, drawing an arc with the point. And lastly, Maki Otosu, or blocking the shinai of the opponent, forcing it downward, doing a little circular movement with our shinai near the suba of the opponent. Next, the application of these movements. <laughs> Hadi is an efficient recourse, very much used.
The Ushi, Otoshi, and Suriyagi men are part of the techniques of defense counterattack. Ochite, Iku, Wasa, being part of techniques like Men, Ushiyotoshi men, Do, Ushiyotoshi men, Kote, Ushiyotoshi men, Suki, Ushiyotoshi men, as well as Men, Suriyagi, Kote, or Kote, Suriyagi, Kote. The maki otoshi men is a technique of attack or shikakete iku wasa.
Next, we begin with the katas of kendo. I'm going to explain the way to take the katana. In the case of the katana, in Japanese fencing, it is held in this way. To adapt the position of taito, the katana is raised by the center of the body until the point reaches the waist, and from there it is inserted beneath the bands of the hakama. In the case of the katana, the suba stays just in the center of the body. To return to the initial position, it is slid halfway toward the center of the body, taken with the right hand and lifted to the side. The way to take the tashi. Take the suba to the height of the navel and from there we adopt the taito position. In the case of the bokuto, it is the suba gashira or end of the handle that is positioned in the center of the body. To return to the initial position, it is taken again to the center and to the right side. In the case of Kodashi, one does it the same way as with the Bokoto. Next, I will explain the positions of Kamai. First, we begin with the Kamai or Tashi or Bokuto. Sigen no Kamai or Chudan no Kamei. Next, the Morote Jodan. In Morote Hidari Jodan, we put the left foot forward and we situate the left hand above the left eye. In Morote Migi Jodan, we raise the Bokuto in a natural way until we exceed the eyes. Next, Aso no Kame. We go up as if we were to adapt Idari Jodan, going down toward the right shoulder and putting the left foot forward. The suba stays at the height of the mouth with a bit of separation from the face. The edge is oriented toward the opponent. Next, I will explain the guard of wakigame. At the same time we put the left foot back, we take the bokuto to the waki, or side. The left hand is situated a bit below and the other behind with respect to the navel, and the edge is oriented toward the ground. The feet are situated in any of these positions. The waki game is the only guard in which one adopts the hainmi position or side position with respect to the opponent. In this guard, the opponent can't see our tashi. In the genden no kame, without letting the left hand drop, we lower the kensen, or point of the tashi, in a natural way. The height of the kensen is to be pointing toward some three centimeters below the knees of the opponent. Next, we pass the guards with the kodashi.
When we adapt the guards with Kodashi, the left hand is situated at the hip with the thumb toward the back. The Kensen is in the center of the body. Before the position Jordan of the opponent, the body adopts the hind me position and advancing the right foot, the Kensen is situated at the height of the face. Before the Genden position of the opponent, one does the same displacement as before, but the Kensen is situated at the height of the chest. The Genden no Kami with Kodashi is done letting the Kodashi fall in a natural way. Also, one adopts the Haimi position, putting the right foot and the right shoulder slightly forward. Here I finish the explanation of the kami forms. Next we will do the seven kata with tashi and the three kata with kodashi. To the left, the ushidashi is situated, who always takes the initiative in the movements and for that, it is usually the master or teacher who takes this role. And to the right, the shidashi, or apprentice, who does and learns the techniques.
I'm going to explain the most important points of the first kata. When the Ushidashi attack comes, the rise of the Tashi delaying a step and later attack to men is the key point of this kata. In this way. In the third kata, once in this position, both rise to the position of shudan. Next, the ushidashi attacks at the same time he turns the tashi. The edge positioned lightly toward the right. The shidashi attacks 
and the ushidashi for his attack positions the body in a way that the point continues pointing to the center of the opponent so that although the opponent closes in his attack is no longer a danger when he again attacks suki delaying the left foot this time we return to divert the attack in the same way equally the tashi of the opponent is diverted from our body in this way, we don't deviate from the center at retreating, and the left hand is always in the center. This is a very important point. The fourth kata. We are approaching the opponent. At the same time, we do Aushi returning to Shudan no Kame. And from there, the Shidashi does Makikashi to dodge the attack. The edge stays like this. Doing Makikashi, this is the way in which the Tashi has to be with the edge facing outward. In the fifth kata, from Jordan, the attack and the shidashi respond with suryagi. In the instant that it is going to hit the men, we do suryage, retreating a step, and without lowering the point of the tashi, attack men and retreat maintaining sanshin. From another plane, we continue with the important points of the fifth kata. When the opponent adopts Morote Idari Joden, the shidashi lightly varies the position of the tashi, pointing to the wrist of the opponent. We do suryagi when the men attack arrives at our head. A step back without lowering the point and attack to the men. We'll do it one more time. In the sixth kata, one goes up from Gedin to the fist of the opponent. He recedes and Shidashi advances, pressuring, pointing to the left wrist of the Ushidashi. Shidashi does Suryagi Kote and gets into position Morote Hidari Joden. When the Kote attack comes, the Suryagi is done in this way. The left foot steps out and the right is placed in front, in this way. This is a very important point. We'll do the sixth kata from another plane. Rising from Gedan, Pressuring the fist of the opponent, go up to Chudan. I press, do a little kote, and we do suriyaki. While we slide the left foot and attacking kote at sliding the right foot, which stays forward. The seventh kata. The opponent threatens to Suki and the Shidashi blocks.
One, two, three, four, and turn. In the second kata, we get closer. We delay the guard, waki, gami, and we attack men. The shidashi then stays in this position pointing at our throat or at our face. To return to the original position, one hardly needs to move the point of the kodashi. Now they do the third kata from another plane so it can be observed. Yeah! 